In 1996, a 15-year-old Swedish kid told his manager he was going to stop playing football so he could go work at the docks. That same year, they had him sign a contract so he wouldn't think again of leaving the club for a regular job. In that contract, right by the X on the bottom right corner of the page, that kid would write his name, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Despite being born in Sweden, he was the son of a Bosnian father and a Croatian mother, who divorced when he was only two years old as his father was an alcoholic. Zlatan didn't get much attention, since his mother had five other kids to take care of, so he'd get in trouble very frequently, being known in his hometown for being a street kid, a troublemaker who would frequently steal bikes from other kids. Just three years after he was convinced to keep playing, he was getting moved up to the first team and getting his professional debut for Malmo FF. Unfortunately, they weren't in great form at the time, even getting relegated after Zlatan's first season. Despite this, it still managed to attract the eyes of some big names, of which Ajax would be the ones to win the race for Zlatan's signing, as he would join them in 2001 for 8.7 million euros. At Ajax, he would get coached by Coadrians, who wouldn't put much faith into Zlatan and would end up leaving him out of the team most games. Zlatan's luck would change as Adrians got sacked in favor of Ronald Koeman. The legendary ex-centre-back would see something special in him and allow him to make a transition into the starting eleven. As Zlatan got up to speed, it will be less than a year before he made his Champions League debut, where he would score twice to turn a tie around to get a 2-1 win against Lyon. His career at Ajax was full of genius moments, but he became public enemy number one in the Netherlands as his teammate Raphael van der Vaart accused Zlatan of injuring him on purpose during an international friendly between Sweden and the Netherlands. As Zlatan entered the pitch in the next game against Breda, he was booed by the fans. This would be the day Zlatan would let the public have a glimpse of his untouchable, unbothered, larger-than-life personality for the first time. It would go onto the pitch, score the first goal, and then, on the 76th minute, it dribbled past six players, even dribbling past the same player twice, then get away from the keeper and slot it in for the second goal that day. That goal would win the Goal of the Season award by Eurosport. And, to aggravate the situation, he would tell the press, Van der Vaart, it's his situation, so it's his problem. The next day, he signed for Juventus. This deal would be worth 16 million euros, and once again he'd have luck on his side as Juventus legend Trezeguet would get injured and he'd easily walk into the starting 11. By the end of the season, he'd have 16 goals in the famous striped shirt. The next season would be less successful as Zlatan was moved to a more defensive role on the wing and would only get 10 goals. This would be made worse as Juventus would face charges for the Calciopoli scandal and be relegated to Serie B. Zlatan would not accept playing at a second tier league so he left the club for Inter Milan who had to pay only 25 million in order to sign him. Right on his first game with the Nerazzurri, he would win the Italian Super Cup against Roma. He would score on his first league game and score an important goal against AC Milan as he'd end up being the top scorer for Inter Milan that year with a total of 15 league goals, which was made more impressive as the team would win the Scudetto with a total of 97 points, an all-time league record at the time. The next season, he'd once again lead Inter to the Scudetto, scoring 17 league goals. This would cement him as a star player as he'd win the Serie A Player of the Year award. Inter Milan would suffer some changes as José Mourinho would take over the managerial role the following season. This would only increase the quality of Zlatan's performances, who would score the Serie A goal of the season against Bologna. A sensational backhill goal of a cross from the Brazilian emperor himself, Adriano. This season, he would blow his scoring record out of the water. As he got more playing time under Mourinho and managed 25 league goals, he would once again win Serie A player of the season. This would be a key moment in Ibramovic's career. He was the best player in the league, he had an amazing relationship with Mourinho, for whom Ibra has said he'd be willing to die and kill for. Despite this, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity was on the table. Barcelona, who had just won a treble, were willing to trade one of their star players, legendary African striker Samuel Eto'o, plus 46 million euros for Zlatan. This was a deal too good to refuse for both the club and the player. It seemed like everyone would get what they wanted, and this would be Ibra's next step on his path to legendary status. Unfortunately, an unexpected twist came into play. Despite Zlatan leading on a solid first season at Barcelona, even being selected into the 2009 UEFA 11 and winning the Super Cup and the league as well as the European Super Cup and the Club World Cup, all of this would seem insignificant as Ibra watched his former team knock him out of the Champions League on the semi-finals and go on to win the treble themselves. This becomes much more painful to hear when you take into consideration that Samuel Eto'o became the first player ever to win two consecutive trebles. 
and that Zlatan's relationship with his coach Pep Guardiola would deteriorate even further as he told him in the middle of the dressing room and later to the press that the loss was his fault as he was in Zlatan's eyes a spineless coward. He would later also blame Messi, who he said made the team switch their formation to one that didn't fit Zlatan. This would lead to the famous quote, you got a Ferrari, but you drive it like a Fiat, as he complained that Pep Guardiola didn't place him properly in the team's formation. The situation at Barcelona was impossible to solve. Because of this, Zlatan would be sent back to Italy on a loan to play this time for AC Milan, who, as most know, are rivals of both Inter and Juventus, both teams Ibra had played for. This transfer saga would be seen as one of the worst pieces of business the team ever took part in, as Barcelona would see their player take a 50 million euro drop in market value in just one year, as AC Milan had the option to buy Zlatan at the end of the loan for just 24 million euros. Regardless, Ibra was never one to let himself go down, no matter how hard the blow. He started off immediately strong as he got 21 goal contributions in his first 21 league games at AC Milan. For this, he would watch the media comparing to many Milan legends, but the season would end without him pulling one of his usual stunts. In a game against Bari, he would push the defender in the stomach, which would get him a 3-match ban, and just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, as he came back to his regular schedule, he would curse out a referee in a game against Fiorentina and get another 3-match ban. Despite his usual behavior, his efforts would be rewarded as AC Milan won their first Serie A in 7 years. Next season wouldn't be so eventful, as despite Zlatan helping them secure a comeback on their first game, which led the team to add another Super Cup to their trophy cabinet, the year would be pretty underwhelming for AC Milan, who would be knocked out of the domestic cup, failed to win the league and would be knocked out of the Champions League by Barcelona, which evidently wasn't Zlatan's preferred way of doing things. After moving around so much, he would finally get some stability in his career. As he moved to PSG for a fee of 20 million euros, he would stay there for 4 seasons, perhaps because at 40 million a year, he was the second highest paid player at the time. His first season at PSG was very similar to his last at AC Milan, as although he did win the French league, he would be knocked out by Barcelona in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. He would score 30 league goals that season, something that hadn't happened in 22 years. This led him to win the French league player of the season award. On his second season in France, he once again scored the goal of the season against Bastia, an acrobatic back heel, something that is seen as a Zlatan trademark. They would once again win the league, because let's be honest, what else could be expected from PSG? Zlatan would score 41 goals in a season, beating the all-time PSG record. Amongst those goals would be a Champions League poker, which would include one of the fastest ever Champions League hat tricks. Unfortunately, PSG would see their way out of the competition once again in the quarterfinals, this time against Chelsea, as they lost on away goals, despite Zlatan managing 10 goals in 8 Champions League games that season. His third season would be the least impressive, as it would be a carbon copy of the previous two, with the only difference being that Zlatan only managed 30 goals. Once again, all he'd take from this season would be a couple of domestic titles and being once again knocked out of the Champions League in the quarterfinals by Barcelona. In his final season, he'd overtake Pauleta to become the all-time top scorer for PSG. He'd also enter the top 10 players with the most Champions League appearances, despite having never even made it to a final. That year, he would score the fastest ever hat trick in French League history, and later told the press that he'd be leaving PSG. To which he added that he would consider staying only if they replaced Eiffel Tower with a statue of himself. And literally, to no one's surprise, he finished the season with some domestic trophies to his name, the Player of the Season award, and a swift knockout in the quarterfinals of the Champions League as they lost to Manchester City. He'd have his last match in the French League stopped in the 10th minute, in honor of the number he wore on his shirt, as the fans gave him a standing ovation. Later, his kids would join him on the pitch for a final goodbye to the fans. Zlatan was now a free agent, and to the surprise of many, he would not leave Europe yet. He would instead join Manchester United as he'd once again be reunited with his former coach Jose Mourinho. In this season, he'd managed to win the Community Shield, as well as the League Cup. Their league performance would be disappointing though, as they only managed 6th place. Despite this, Ibra would still be nominated to PFA Player of the Year. At continental level, they would go all the way to the Europa League final, which Zlatan missed due to a knee injury. Regardless, Manchester United would still get the win, as Mkhitaryan and Paul Pogba would both score. His injury would last for most of his second season with the club. Despite him recovering faster than usual, to which he added that lions don't recover like humans, he would only manage to play 8 more games before announcing the termination of his contract. In what seemed like his victory lap, Zlatan would now leave Europe for the MLS, where he joined LA Galaxy. 
during his time in the US, his antics would get on an all new level. Just as he joined the club, he would buy an ad on the Los Angeles Times that would simply read, Los Angeles, you're welcome. He'd go on to score his 500th career goal against Toronto FC, to which he would simply say, Toronto should be happy, they will be remembered as my 500th victim. He would score another amazing goal with an acrobatic flick, once again against Toronto FC. This goal would be nominated to the Puskas Award and would win the MLS goal of the season. By the end of the season, LA Galaxy would finish 7th in the Western Conference, but he would still be included in the season's All-Star team and win Newcomer of the Year award. For his second season there, he'd be named captain. This season would be most notable for his constant confrontation with Carlos Vela, who played for city rivals Los Angeles FC. LA Galaxy would end up going through the playoffs this time, being knocked out by no other than Los Angeles FC themselves, in an 8-goal epic where Ibra would score, but Vela would score twice, leading to a 5-3 final score. By the end of the season, Zlatan announced on Twitter that he'd be leaving LA Galaxy and as most expected this to be the end of his career, he would actually go on to sign for AC Milan, where he currently is, having played 10 matches so far, most notably scoring for Inter and becoming the oldest ever player to score in the Derby della Madonnina. As you might have noticed, I left his international career with the Swedish team for last, as it was quite underwhelming since the Swedish national team hasn't experienced much success in the last decades. Despite Zlatan not being enough to carry the team, he did have some very iconic moments in the bright yellow shirt, although the farthest he ever got was the quarterfinals of the Euros in 2004. In 2012, he would score all four goals in a 4-2 win over England, and most notably, a 35-yard bicycle kick, which would finally get him a Puskas award. This goal would be frequently mentioned as the greatest goal of all time. It faced Portugal in the 2014 World Cup playoff, whichever team won the game would make it to the final stage. The media would pin this as a matchup between Ibrahimovic and Cristiano Ronaldo, as both national teams relied heavily in their star players. Ronaldo would open the score sheet, Zlatan would fight back with two goals, and Heather and a free kick shot under the wall, but it would be no match for Cristiano Ronaldo, who would score two more goals, getting his hat trick and adding another heroic performance to his resume as Sweden missed the Euro Cup final stage for the second time in a row. Sweden would also get knocked out in the group stage of the Euro 2016, and Zlatan would announce his retirement from international football, finishing as the highest ever international scorer for Sweden. Zlatan is a strange case in the world of football. His biggest strength is also his biggest weakness. His personality brought him to legendary status, made other players fear him and gave him an advantage. But it made his relationships with teammates harder and his overconfidence would prove to be detrimental several times during his career. Zlatan is the king of acrobatic finishes, a true one-of-a-kind footballer, standing at almost 2 meters tall. His touch and technique look unnatural, which makes it even more spectacular to watch. Having never played an European final, he seems undeserving of such an unimpressive international performance record. But however, his career might have failed to deliver what was expected, he made sure he will certainly never be forgotten. Getting now onto our ranking system, a striker should be judged first by his finishing, which is the central attribute of a striker. Zlatan can score in every way possible, if the ball gets to him, he gets it done. How else could he have managed 500 plus career goals? Despite this, if we want to be fair, we have to take into account that he never showed himself to be a free kick or long distance specialist. This gets him a 9 out of 10. Secondly, we will judge his positioning, which is also world class, and Zlatan will get an 8 out of 10. For speed and physicality, he gets a 7 out of 10, as despite him being a player that relies heavily on his strength, he is not the fastest player by a long shot. The fourth technical attribute to be taken into account is his first touch and ball control, which Zlatan has displayed some serious ability in. This should get him a 7 out of 10. The final technical attribute we will judge is mentality. This has been previously discussed and I judge it to be worth a 5 out of 10 as it can lead to very mixed results. Now, taking into account the attributes that define a legacy, the first one is consistency, which he sure was consistent, the problem is that he was consistently underperforming internationally, only managing to go further than the quarterfinals in the Champions League once. Despite this, he did perform in several distinct countries so he will get a 4 out of 10 in this aspect. Secondly, Flair. Not the most skilled player, but he was certainly the most agile and showed some unique finishing skills. This will earn him a 7 out of 10 when it comes to this subject. 
We also take into account his trophy cabinet, which is massively unimpressive as he never won the Champions League or an international trophy, therefore he will get a 3 out of 10. The fourth of these aspects is longevity, which there are few players who have played for as long as Latan, going on 21 years already and still going, for this he will get a 10 out of 10. Lastly, we will take into account the icon factor. Zlatan is definitely iconic and unforgettable, but mostly for his persona. This will prevent him from getting a perfect score, only getting a 9 out of 10. All these attributes total out at 69, which is 5 points lower than Luis Figo, the only player who has been ranked so far. Zlatan is many things, but above all, Zlatan is unique, and that is what truly will keep him among the greatest. Deep down, we all hope he will never change. So this is it, this is the second episode of this series, there was some very positive feedback in the last episode, I hope you enjoyed this next one and there will surely be many more, uh, if you enjoyed don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you want to suggest another player for a future episode, and that is it, see you next time.